then I would like to um, uh, we move forward. Uh, Felix Gutzwiller is uh, both a professor of medicine um, and a member of parliament. Um, he has a long uh, standing experience in both, in both identities and I hope that he will uh, tell us a bit more about personal medicine and what challenges that gives us. Please, Felix. Yeah, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Uh, I should, uh, dear colleagues, start off with uh, my thanks to our Portuguese host for the, for the most wonderful uh, hospitality we've been experiencing so far. This evening was a splendid occasion in that Red Cross building and I'm sure also in the Parliament building will have an excellent day. So thank you very much for your great hospitality. I will be talking about uh, personalized medicine uh, and thus, this fits in very well indeed uh, to the talk uh, Maria de Belen Mosera just gave you. Uh, I will uh, base myself on some of the basic concepts in terms of genomics that she referred to already, so I can be brief in that respect because you just heard uh, some of the very important definitions. I will talk uh, about a recent report that came out by Swiss. Uh, technology assessment, Swiss <coughs> DA that you know uh, well, a report I was not involved in, so I will, I will talk from the point of view of a customer, because uh, as being a member of one of the committees that the report is addressed to, I look upon it uh, rather as a user, as a customer, and not as a producer of that particular report. Um, I will just very briefly talk about some generalities and then go on into details of the report itself, also illustrate some of the conclusions it came to. You have heard a lot yesterday evening on uh, the aspects of technology assessment. I can uh, skip that over. Uh, I perhaps would like to point out just one particular item, which is the third item here on the list. Uh, different methodologies such as expertise and participatory TA in uh, yeah, okay. the pointer. Yeah, you may see it perhaps uh, with the pointer. One particular topic that concerns our own country, uh, which we should in the future go into some detail, is the relationship between the democratic processes in TA, also René Langer talked about it yesterday evening, with the different types of democracies we have. In Switzerland, for instance, you have a direct democratic system. So people, for instance, decide, people decide on an issue such as a new law on stem cells. The general public decides on new law on stem cells. Uh, they decide uh, or will decide very soon on a new technology such as pre-implantation diagnostics in uh, medicine. So in a direct democratic system you have a different relationship to the democratic basis of uh, technology assessment and I think one issue that uh, is particularly of interest for us in the methodology will be in the future to go a little bit more into the type of democratic procedures you have, representative democracy, direct democracy, semi-direct democracy, and its relationship to participatory methods within technology assessment. Switzerland's second slide, that was covered yesterday by René Langer. We have a legal basis that is, of course, from a parliamentary point of view, very important indeed. We have a legal basis in our law <coughs> and the federal law on promotion of research and innovation. Uh, for technology assessment, we have a setup that organizes technology assessment within the context of the Swiss Academies of Arts and Sciences. So it's not a setup that is directly in the line of parliament, parliament but is really a little bit outside, uh, covered by the umbrella of the Swiss Academies of Arts and Sciences, which I think is a very good setup, uh, where Swiss DA is a center of excellence within these. Academies, and of course, it has the task, as you know, very well, like with all of you, of decision-making basis for uh, Parliament and the Federal Council. One point or one example being personalised medicine that I will talk about in a minute. Of course, there have been many other topics. Uh, maybe some of you will remember that we talked about geothermal energy. Uh, we've been talking about nanotechnology. Uh, um, and many other issues were covered in the last years in medicine. 
Um, TFS has been and the political system in Switzerland has been interested in the issue of personalized medicine for many of the reasons that Maria just gave us a minute ago. The topic is very important indeed in all of our countries. It in fact is based on the meeting of two very powerful uh, developments, uh, scientific developments, technical developments. On one side, all that goes along with the omics, primarily genomics, there are other omics also, but also uh, going along with the information technology. Big data was mentioned by uh, Maria, I'll come back to it because there is a big issue addressed by the report on ownership of data, who uh, is really, who are really the owners of these data, the people, the patients, the industry, the government, uh, the social security system, etc. Some, some very important issues here of political relevance that come up. So these two very important societal developments are at the basis of our interest for personalized medicine. There might be some chances that some of the issues the report had to look into. Uh, we've had an increasing innovation rate in medicine. We have many, many scientific discoveries that have uh, direct bearing on disease development. We uh, could potentially increase the quality of medical treatments by better targeting specific and also very costly treatments on the patients that really need them and can benefit from them. Um, we will be able to mobilize for their own health people that do have uh, health literacy, that do have an affinity towards technology, which means at the same time we'll, we'll have to be careful about people who don't. And of course, some aspects also present a very interesting opportunities for <coughs> commercial and economic development. The other side, you could hypothesize that there are quite a number of risks uh, involved here also. Personal rights is where the issue, come back to that. Uh, the boundaries between health and illness, if you can predict certain genetic diseases later in life, early on, what does that really uh, mean? Uh, of course, you can also uh, see some risks in the increasing costs and thus the tensions uh, in the social security system, what should you pay for, how much should you pay for one given individual, these are some of the questions that will come up with personalized medicine. Now the report itself based itself on an analysis of the status quo, which uh, was more or less uh, what is lined up here, personalized medicine has started already. Many diseases, for instance in breast cancer as one prominent example, you have today applications of personalized medicine. Uh, it is not clear, however, today whether this is really the vision for the future, for the whole of uh, medicine. Uh, it is not clear uh, whether a two dominant personalized medicine system based on genomics and biology uh, really disregards uh, some of the social and uh, economic and societal contexts of health, all of this has to be uh, examined in such a report. Um, it is also clear that personalized medicine is a very ambitious concept, in other words, to individualize disease, diagnostics and treatment for each individual uh, op or opens really a new area in medicine. Uh, I said already that uh, there is some social discrimination potentially a risk to the extent that people that go along well with modern technologies that have a good health literacy may benefit more. Uh, that is one of the concerns one should have when one is, is addressing this uh, topic. Now, what will be the impact on the health system? The report also shows quite clearly that uh, this will mean that specialization will increase further. This is already one of the important features of modern health systems, of course you know that very well. Uh, it has some benefits, it ha has also some risks. A further specialization also presents both sides of the medal. It becomes for the system all the more challenging to get together these different specialties into a holistic view of a patient's disease and his prognosis. It also represents some very important challenges for the documentation of the healthcare system. Uh, we have, for instance, in Switzerland right now a bill before Parliament on the uh, 
electronic patient record and difficult issue. Should you force everyone to have it? What would be its content? Uh, do uh, physicians have uh, to comply? Can people refuse to have certain documents in their electronic patient records, psychiatric diagnosis or whatever you want? These are many uh, difficult issues, not resolved at all, and we are having quite some pain in the Swiss Parliament to come up with a good basis for uh, electronic patient record in the Swiss healthcare system. Of course, personalized medicine also means huge investments. Uh, I mentioned that already. Oh, I'm talking too fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we uh, mentioned already personalized medicine means huge investments, not only in technology, uh, but also for the cost of the system. And you know very well that some of the specific personalized cancer therapies may run up to $100,000, $200,000 a year per patient, uh, including some of the diagnostic measures. That is a huge challenge for all our healthcare system, and nobody knows where the limit should be uh, for the amount of money you pay for one given year of life saved. For instance, the Swiss uh, federal, <coughs> federal court uh, recently stipulated in a case that this should be not more than 100,000 Swiss francs, uh, roughly 100,000 euro, but this is of course completely arbitrary. It illustrates, however, that society will in the future have to address these issues. How much money are we going to spend on one given individual for one given a year of life saved? Many of these questions are important to clarify because they include some of the basic values of our societies, such as questions about fairness and solidarity. Very important for us uh, as lawmakers in the report is its conclusions regarding the regulatory framework. So it comes clearly to the conclusion that right now the regulatory framework in Switzerland is not, uh, not entirely ready for personalized medicine I mentioned some of the aspects. We don't really have a basis for electronic patient records. Many of the personal data issues are not resolved. I mentioned the very important uh, topic, who are the owners of the data? If you uh, think of the million and million of data on one given patient, if you analyze the genome, uh, is it the patient? Is it the doctor? Is it the companies, the many private companies that do large-scale uh, genomic testing today, so on a commercial uh, basis, is it these companies that own it? Uh, is it the government? All these questions need to be resolved if we want to minimize risks and come up with the full benefits of personalized medicine. Thank you.